Okay. Uh, good evening, and welcome to the uh, 19th meeting of the 13th elected Town Council of Happy Valley Goose Bay. Uh, we have our agenda before us. Um, did you want to bring that matter to the table? Oh, okay. Okay, the first matter I'd like to bring to the table today is appoint Kathy Eddy's our town clerk as Nadine McCauley's out of town for this meeting. So I move that we appoint Kathy Eddy's acting town clerk for this meeting. Okay, it's moved by uh, Councillor Brumfield that we uh, appoint Kathy Eddy as a town clerk for this meeting. Seconded by, seconded by Councillor Bennett. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra-minded? Okay, thank you, Ms. Eddy. All right, so let's move along. We have our agenda in front of us. Um, any additions that anybody wants to add or changes or fixes? All right, so I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as it's presented there. Moved by Councillor Duffett, seconded by Councillor Rumbold. Uh, discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra-minded? And the motion is passed. We've accepted our agenda. Uh, the agenda shows that there are two delegations, and um, our PR manager advises that uh, there are no uh, folks, uh, four delegations this evening. So I guess we'll move on with, uh, with the, uh, the agenda to item number three. Uh, adoption of previous minutes. We have two sets of minutes there that uh, need to be approved. And uh, we'll start with the 18th minutes. All right, so uh, you have the minutes of the 18th uh, council uh, meeting in front of you. Uh, may I get a uh, motion to accept them as presented? Moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace, seconded by uh, Councillor Winters. Any discussion? Errors, omissions? Okay, none being heard. Uh, all in favor to accept the minutes as presented, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Okay, we've accepted the 17 minutes. And we'll, or sorry, the 18th minutes, we'll move into the 17th meeting. That was held on May 24th. Uh, minutes are there in front of you, so I'll entertain a motion to accept them as presented. Moved by Councillor Duffett. Seconded by Councillor Broomfield. Any discussions, errors, or omissions? <coughs> all right, none being heard. I will, uh, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? All right. That's accepted. We've accepted the minutes from those two meetings. Moving on to correspondence. Uh, on May the 19th, uh, the correspondence record shows that we received the Municipal Assessments uh, 2023 Assessment Roll. So that is there. And we also received from them an update on the Municipal Assessment Agency. So those two items, uh, just for your information and information for the meeting. All right, let's move into uh, committee reports. Uh, we'll start with the uh, community planning and development. I'll turn the microphone and the floor over to Deputy Mayor Wallace. Thank you, Mayor. The Community Planning and Development Committee met on Wednesday, June 15th at 4.30. Present was myself as chair, engineer Randy Dillon, uh, engineer tech Mark Urquhart, Waylon Williams as uh, minutes and uh, Mayor George Andrews uh, ex officio and Councillor Pam Duffett. Regrets from the meeting were CAO Nadine McCauley and Kathy Eddy and Hayward Broomfield. Meeting was called to order at 4.44 p.m. Review of minutes with uh, an action items with no errors or omissions. Discuss was the commun community development and research position as it's still vacant and interviews to, uh, to start shortly. Monthly permit report presented by engineering tech Mark Urquhart. Monthly permit applications were enclosed and we discussed those as they came up. New Crown Land applications, we have those um, later on in some recommendations as well as some deferred Crown Land applications to follow. Discretionary land use applications um, discussed and Those items are to follow through with recommendations. The meetings was adjourned at 6.25 p.m. with the next meeting scheduled Wednesday, July 13th at 3 p.m. Please accept this as my minutes haven't been read. 
Okay, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace. Uh, she's moving that the Community Planning and Development uh, Report be accepted as presented. A seconder? Councillor Duffett, any discussion? Okay, none heard, I'll uh, call for a vote. All those in favor to accept the report as presented, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. Okay, motion is passed. Uh, we'll go into recommendations from the committee and um, we'll be doing these one by one, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, so mm -hmm. I'll pass to turn the floor back to Deputy Mayor Wallace. Great, thank you, Mayor. We have um, the first Recommendation 159715, Shannon Bird Cottage. The CPD committee recommends that council have no objection to the Crown Land application 159715 on the condition that future development complies with the town's development regulations. Okay, recommended by, or sorry, approved, or uh, motion by <laughs> Deputy Mayor Wallace that we accept application 159715. Uh, a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Duffett. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded, pass. Next item, please. Item 72459, Hannah Coles, grant to the existing title. The CPD committee recommends this matter should be deferred so that engineering tech can seek further clarification. Okay, so it's uh, in terms of deferring, uh, motion required? I think the other items, is there a motion required? Okay. Um, so it's moved that we defer the uh, item, seven, or application number 72459. Uh, seconder? So, uh, seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of deferring, uh, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion passed. Next item, please. Thank you. Item 158051, Chris Cabot Cottage. The CPD committee recommends council continue to defer until the applicant provides NAB Canada approval letter. Okay, it's moved that uh, we defer uh, application 158051 until the information necessary is provided. Seconded by Councillor Brumfield. Discussion? All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. Motion is passed. Next item. Item 157576, Joe Michelin, dwelling. The CPD committee recommends that council provide no objection for Crown Land application 157576, subject to applicant shall follow the town's discretionary land application process, and development standards are at the discretion of the council. Okay, so it's been moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace that we accept uh, or provide no objection to Crown Land's application number 157576. Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Motion passed. Next item, please. Thank you, Mayor. 9 Halifax Street, Data Center 5.3.17. The CPD committee recommends that council defer this application as they felt it should have input from all of council. Okay, so it's moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace that uh, the 9 Halifax Data Center application. Uh, be deferred, seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? And I, I just want to make in here a point that um, I think it's important for folks to know that, you know, we are in the process of discussing uh, data centers in general, and uh, until that's, uh, you know, decided mm -hmm. and we have a plan going forward, uh, these uh, particular applications will be, uh, will be deferred. Any other further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of deferring this, this application for a nine Halifax, indicate uh, with aye. 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 Contra minded. Motion is passed. Next item, please. Thank you. Six Grenfell Street, Labrador Friendship Center, Plex Housing, 5.6.10.1. The CPD committee recommends council defer for further clarification. Okay, it's moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace that the application for um, six Grenfell Street Plex housing uh, be uh, deferred, uh, seconded by Councillor Brumfield. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Passed. Next item, please. 
Thank you, Mayor. 45 Lake Crescent, McLean's Jerky is a home-based business. The CPD committee recommends council defer for further information. Okay, moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace that the application for 45 Lake Crescent be deferred for further uh, information. Uh, seconded by Councillor uh, Broomfield. Discussion. Okay, none being heard. Uh, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. Motion is passed. Next uh, item. Thank you. Next one being 8 Chalk Street. Heard Construction is a home based business. The CPD committee recommends council support and approve the application from Kyle Hurd for home based business located at 8 Chalk Street with the following conditions. A, fire and safety inspection as per NFPA 101 be satisfactorily, satisfactorily completed at the applicant's cost. B, applicant provides an application for business registration, change of use at the applicant's cost. C, compliance with all the town's development regulations with special reference to section 6.3, business in a residential land use class. And D, applicant obtains all required approvals from service NL or any government agencies having jurisdiction. Okay, moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace uh, that we uh, recommend support and approve the application uh, for 8 Chalk Street, heard construction. Uh, seconder, seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded, motion is passed. Next item, please. Next item is 10 Lyle Street, Melville Property Solutions. The CPD committee recommends that council support and approve the application from Joe Legg for home-based business located at 10 Lyle Street with the following conditions. A fire uh, and life safety inspection as per NFPA 101 be satisfactorily completed at the applicant's cost. Applicant provides an application for a business registration change of use at the applicant's cost. Compliance with all the town's development regulations with special uh, reference to section 6.3, business in a residential land use class. Application, uh, sorry, the applicant obtains all required approvals from service NL or any government agencies having jurisdiction. Okay, thank you. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace that, <coughs> excuse me, we accept the um, Support and approval of the application for uh, Mr. Legg at 10 Lyle Street from Melville Property Solutions. Uh, seconder? Seconded by Councillor Duffett. Uh, discussion? Okay. All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Motion is passed. Next item, please. Next item is number two, Chalk Street. Sassy and Classy, home based business. The CPD committee recommends that council support and approve the application from Chelsea Ganey from a home-based business located at 2 Chalk Street with the following conditions. A fire and life safety inspection as per NFPA 101 be satisfactorily completed at the applicant's cost. Applicant provides an application for business registration change of use at the applicant's cost. Compliance with the town's development regulations with special reference to section 6.3, business in a residential land use class. An applicant obtains all required approvals from service NL or any government agencies having jurisdiction. Applicant confirms ownership questions. All right, so it's moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace that the uh, recommended council recommend and support and approve the application for 2 Chalk Street with Sassy Classy Home Based Business. Seconder? Seconded by Councillor Duffett. A discussion? Yes, go ahead, Councillor Duffett. Has the applicant confirmed their ownership of this property, though? No, we're waiting on confirmation from that. If all goes well, everything's approved, waiting on the confirmation of um, not the ownership, but whether the, the owner of the building has approved this. Oh, okay. If I recall correctly, the owner of the building build out the Completed business the application, application but, we're waiting but for the uh, one of our things is that uh, it requires a, a letter of approval from a, a landlord or owner if the owner is not the, uh, the applicant. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded, we've passed. I'll ask for the next item after uh, I will pass the chair to the deputy mayor as the next item is a personal conflict for me, and uh, I would like the record to indicate that I've left the room. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> All righty. Next item, and the final item here, is 64 Adams Loop, NB Driving School. It's a home-based business. The CPD recommends that council support and approve the application from George Andrews for home-based business located at 64 Adams Loop with the following conditions. A fire and life safety inspection as per NFPA 101 be satisfactorily completed at the applicant's cost. B, applicant provides an application for a business registration change of use at the applicant's cost. C, compliance with all towns development regulations with special reference to section 6.3, business in a residential land use class. And D, applicant obtains all required approvals from service NL or any government agencies having jurisdiction. Any discussion on that? You call second, second, it. second it. Yeah. The pan, uh, Councillor Duffett, excuse me. And no, we had a seconder, Councillor Winters. Discussion. All right, with that being said, it's approved. Vote. Vote. We have to vote. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Everyone indicate with aye. 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 Approved unanimous. Can someone uh, indicate to Mayor Andrews, come back in the room? You, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, so that concludes the, uh, the Community Planning and Development uh, Committee information. Uh, just to make a note that um, the reason we have to read some of the, uh, the recommendations seem to be the same information, but uh, we've been instructed from Municipal Affairs that each one has to be read and approved in a public meeting. So that's why we, uh, we have to read the uh, the information out. <laughs> All right, so we move on next to uh, community services and recreation uh, committee report and any recommendations if there are any. I'll pass the floor to the chair, Councillor Winters. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we held our meeting on June 13th, 2020 at 4.30 p.m. President were myself, Deputy Mayor Wallace, Councillor Pam Dovett, Mayor George Andrews, Director Travis Ford and Pierre Williams. Regrets for Ernie and Nadine McCauley and Randy Dillon and Kathy. We had one delegation. Meeting call was, was called to order at 4.54. Uh, there was a review of previous minutes and action items. There was no omissions or errors. There was one discussion regarding the outdoor market, and that was passed off to the new CSR director. And uh, there was no manager report as he just started the position. Next meeting is scheduled for Monday, July 11th at 4.30 p.m. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Winters. Um, okay, it's been moved by Councillor Winters that we accept the Community Services and Recreation Report as presented. Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Any discussion? I'd just like to note uh, I'm glad to see Travis is there and feet on the ground and moving ahead. He started with the lab cup, so I guess it's trial I by fire. So yeah, <laughs> He's still with are. us, which is absolutely wonderful. And he yeah. did dive into the situation, yeah. and he's really... Really Good. getting this job done. Excellent. So we look forward to some enhancements in that in that regard. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in no recommendations. Right? Okay. No, I'll, I'll okay. approve this first. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the report, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Okay. We've received the report. Um, there are no recommendations from uh, the CSR committee this month. So. All right, we'll move into the Finance and Admin and Policy Committee, and I will put past the floor to Councillor Brumfield. Thank you, Your Worship. The Finance and Administration Policy Committee met on June tw 20th at 4.30. Present was myself and the Chair of Hayward Brumfield, Councillor Bennett and Councillor Rumble, and ex-officio Mayor Andrews. The staff present were Chief Administ Administrative Officer Nadine McCauley, Director of Financial Operations, Mike Dalmont, Executive Assistant, Kathy Eddy, Super, 
Superintendent of Assessment and Taxation, Kelsey Campagna, and Public Relations, Waylon Williams. The first part from 4.30 to 5, approximately, we had one delegate, one delegate presenting his issue with the council, and it's basically concerning vacant property tax on west of Heffler subdivision development. Pre he presented this to the previous council in, late, in their late term last year, and unfortunately for them, none of them are re-elected, so this year was left by the wayside, and we, he presented to this council as well on this here meeting. So what we decided to do, this is our first time meeting with him, we've asked our uh, Supervisor of Assessment and Taxation, Kelsey, to provide us with some information, and we hope to review that at the next Finance and Ministries Policy Committee meeting and make our decision then. So the meeting itself actually started, it was called to order at 5 p.m. on June 20th. Um, the first item we had was we had a presentation for audited financial statements for 2018 from the auditors Kelsey G. Humphreys and Gander Newfoundland. Now I'd like to point out that even though we are approving these statements, this is audited statements from four years ago. So under the Municipalities Act, the council is required to approve them. This should have been done quite a while ago. So this is why it's coming to us now for approval because we're just receiving them actually. Okay, so <coughs> there will be a uh, recommendation at the end of this report to deal with that. The new business we discussed, we had a request from the Mulcomy Status Thrifty Fashions, which is a nonprofit organization with business tax exemption. We had a request from our residents to have water and sewer tax exemption. And we also had discussion on a change the flags in the front hall. And then we had a donation request for a special physical equipment committee for seniors for $1,000. And as well, all the managers, the SAT, the DFO, the PR, and the special events managers, they all submitted the reports for review. And as well, we had an information item from the Municipal Assessment Agency, which is also included in our correspondence. And we reviewed the YNC claims to date. And then this meeting was adjourned at 6.58 p.m. And our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, July the 18th at 4.30 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Broomfield. So it's uh, moved by Councillor Broomfield that we accept the uh, Finance and Minimum Policy Committee report as presented. Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Uh, discussion? Yeah, I think it's a, a very important to note that uh, the audit process, uh, because the audits hadn't been done in, uh, in many years, um, and we, we, we're not looking backwards, we're looking forward as a, as a council, um, it put us in a bit of a strange position with uh, municipal affairs and, and other restrictions. Uh, because uh, things like, for instance, our municipal operating grant was held back. Uh, our ability to enter into uh, financial arrangements greater than 36 months. Um, things along the lines of uh, borrowing funds uh, to pay for uh, you know, projects that were on the books and things. So it put us in a, a considerable uh, uh, challenge uh, from that perspective. Uh, not a financial challenge, but just a challenge in trying to do regular day business. So as uh, Councillor uh, Brumfield has, uh, has said and was discussed, you know, it, it is a good thing. We've, uh, we uh, terminated uh, the contract with a, the other uh, previous uh, auditor. We entered into a, uh, a contract with Kim Humphreys Corporation uh, in, uh, in Gander, and we've had nothing but uh, good work and good success moving forward. We have 2018 out of the way now, and we've also made representation to the minister uh, in regards of trying to... Uh, to get that umbrella that we're under uh, fiscal constraint, I guess, umbrella, uh, in order to be able to continue to do regular work. So it's a really good news story. Not sure why four or five years later we're looking at audits that are that old. But anyway, going forward, we uh, the plan is in place to correct that, and uh, we won't be in this position four or five years. We hope to by you know maybe early next year have all the audits in place and the numbers for for people to uh, to see as they. Uh, as they represent the particular time. Any other further discussion? 
Okay, all those in favor of accepting the report as presented, uh, identify with aye. 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 Contraminded. Okay, we've accepted the reports. Uh, the report. Mm -hmm. So we're going to recommendations now from the Finance and Minimum Policy Committee, and I'll pass the microphone back to floor yeah. back to Councilor. Sorry. Right. Thank you. I'm. I need to declare conflict for the business tax exemption request. Okay. For the Mokmi status of women. Council. All right. So what we'll do. Do we want to do the others and do that last, or what's the feel? Do we want to do that one first? Yeah, we can do that one. Do that one? So okay. Yeah. So we'll just put uh, item A on, uh, we'll put it at the end mm -hmm. so we can continue on. All right. So uh, the floor is yours, sir. Okay. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay. We have one and two are exemption requests from parcel ID 079129. Committee reviewed your briefing note and attached letter and agreed with the following recommendation. The FAP committee recommends council deny the request to, ex to exempt one water and sewer charge for a parcel ID 079129 and continue to charge water and sewer in accordance with policy F0008 until and unless the municipal assessment agency determines only one dwelling exists on this property. Okay, it's moved at the water exemption request number 079129 uh, uh, be denied uh, as per committee recommendation. Uh, moved by Councillor Broomfield, seconded by Councillor Duffett. Discussion? Okay, uh, all those in favor with denying this request uh, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Motion is passed. Next item, please. Okay, the next item is the flag array proposed changes. Committee reviewed the briefing note and graphics enclosed and agreed with the following recommendation. The FAP committee recommends council support changes to the current flag array in front of the town hall by replacing member nation flags with indigenous and first nation flags and having member nation flags displayed in council chambers. Staff will provide required revisions to policy A0033 and include them in a follow-up briefing note for a council review and approval. Okay, moved by Councillor um, Broomfield and the committee that the uh, flag array proposed changes will be accepted. Seconded by Councillor Rumbold. Uh, discussion? Councillor Rumbold. Mayor, I just wanted to um make note to the general public that this is something that's been talked about pretty much since we all were first elected. Um, I think it's a very positive move, um, something that we're all looking forward to, but also um, the reference is made to policy A0033, and in reviewing that policy, we have to kind of determine that previous councils did have the foresight that this would someday be something that would be considered because there is a a very extensive policy put in place and it's not going to be a simple matter of taking down a flag and replacing it with another there will be um, respect paid to the existing flags of the allied nations um, i think it even states in our policy that we'll play the national anthems of the nations as we're um, decommissioning or, or taking down the flags um, those flags will then be um, either put in shadow boxes or displayed somewhere within our building. So um, change is good. Change is, is something that we all um, look to. Um, as somebody who I, I think all of us around this table have spent most of our lives in Goose Bay, um, it's a part of our history and we'll never forget a part of our history. But right now, I think in the, in the current um, town that we live in, um, we've got roughly a third of our population that is indigenous and uh, anybody who's seen the graphic and I'm hoping that we'll have it available to the public um, it will be very nice to see the new changes and it also and I think it just an added perk that we've mentioned as a council it will also free up an additional flagpole so that um, our our public will notice when we do um, something like pride or um, the Philippine Heritage Month or any special events, we don't actually have a spare flagpole. So we'll have that spare flagpole. So I think it's, it's just all over positive 
and uh, I hope that um, everybody is um, as excited as I am to see those new flags. No, absolutely, and uh, I remember several months ago uh, floating this uh, idea through through council, and it was based on a discussion I had with uh, an Indigenous uh, uh, person who said to me, you know, why do you fly those flags? And uh, sort of around the same time, there was a gentleman visiting town uh, who wondered why we flew the Italian flag at uh, council chamber. So I, you know, at council uh, at the town hall. So I explained to him uh, that um, I reached out to our manager, PR manager, uh, William Williams, and I got to say, um, the uh, document that you produced that we saw at committee meeting was bar none absolutely excellent well. And uh, I thank you uh, for that because it sets the way to what we hope will be a uh, on September 30th. Um, we're in the process of uh, engaging with uh, Indigenous uh, leaders. We've met uh, some already to discuss this uh, issue to ensure that um, you know what we're doing is, uh, is correct and uh, acceptable. And yes, we'll definitely involve uh, you know our friends at Five Wing and uh, the Legion and uh, deflag or demask the flags during a you know a, a proper ceremony. Uh, and yes, the uh, policy is there, uh, so it's being reviewed. So those flags will come in here uh, as part of our history. It's a history we can't forget. We uh, you know we we shouldn't forget. But at the same time, from a proactive approach from council. We're moving forward in reconciliation, and I think that's hugely important uh, from a council perspective because on, although we're not an indigenous community, we are a community that uh, uh, a large number of indigenous residents reside uh, within our community. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, you know, I'm very pleased that we'll, we'll see that. And uh, so September 30th is the, is the date that we're looking at doing that with some pomp and ceremony and celebration on the... Uh, front lawn and Kinsman Park and things like that so staff will work on that and we'll continue to uh, we'll continue to update the uh, public uh, and with the engagement of all the indigenous groups and the offerings from our friends from Five Wing and the Legion it'll be a great day well we hope to be a great day any further discussion okay great all those in favor of uh, accepting the recommendation as presented indicate with aye aye, aye. aye. Country minded. Uh, next item, please. Okay, the next item. Special Physical Equipment Committee for Seniors donation request. Committee reviewed the briefing note and letter enclosed and agreed with the following recommendation. The FAB committee recommends council approve a monetary donation for the year of 2022 in the amount of $1,000 to SPECS. Okay, it's been moved uh, that we uh, accept a, uh, or approve, sorry, or a monetary donation for specs uh, for the amount of $1,000. Seconded by? Councillors, we'll go <laughs> Councillor Rumble. I saw her hand first. Uh, discussion? Uh, as far as I know, this is a program we've been involved in in a long time. Yes. And uh, many, uh, you know, from early days, we've been involved in this, so it's a good cause. Uh, all those in favor, indicate what I. Uh, Aye. Contra minded. Okay, motion is passed. So, uh, as Councillor Duffett has declared, no, I'd like to do oh. the financial statement one before we do. Oh, um, that's, on the that's the addition one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. The next one is the 2018 audited financial statements. <coughs> Be it resolved that pursuant to Section 86.1 of the Municipalities Act, the Town Council of the Town of Happy Valley Goose Bay approved the 2018 audited financial statements prepared by Kimberly G. Humphreys, Professional Cor Corporation, and authorized Mayor George Andrews to sign on behalf of Council. Okay, moved by Councillor uh, by Committee and Councillor Brumfield that we accept the 2018 audited financial statements and that I will, uh, I will sign them on Council's behalf. Seconded by Councillor Rumbold. Discussion? I will be only too happy to sign. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Motion is passed. Okay, so as Councillor Duffett has declared conflict in this item, I'm going to ask her if she will leave the chambers for a quick moment. Mayor, I have to uh, declare a conflict as well for the same um, subject. My daughter is an employee of Mokami Status of Women Council. Okay, absolutely wonderful. So have the record indicate that Deputy Mayor is, uh, is declaring conflict due to uh, family connection. Uh, 
All right, so they have vacated the chambers. Um, Councillor Broomfield. Okay, the business tax exemption request for parcel ID 0795710002. Committee reviewed the briefing note and supporting documentation and agreed with the following recommendation. The FAP committee recommends council approve to grant an exemption to Malcolm Status of Women Council for thrifty fashions for 2022 in the amount of $737.66. Okay, it's moved by uh, Councillor uh, Brumfield and the committee that we uh, recommend the. Uh, um, just look for a number. Yep, uh, the uh, exemption request zero seven nine five seven one zero zero two. Moved by Councillor Brumfield, seconded by Councillor Winters. Discussion. Okay, all those in favour indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Motion is passed. Would one of you, dear gentlemen up there, uh, admit our Deputy Mayor and our... Uh, Okay, so we'll move to the next committee. Uh, that will be Municipal Services, and I will pass the floor to Councillor Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Municipal Service Committee met Tuesday, June 14th at 4.30 p.m. Present, Councillor Denise Rumble, Councillor Todd Winters, Mayor George Andrews, ex officio, Town Engineer Randy Dillon, Superintendent of Water and Sewer Keith Foy, Manager of Public Relations Waylon Williams. Regrets. CAO Nadine McCauley, Superintendent Public Works DJ Elliott, Ex Executive Assistant Kathy Eddy, and myself. <coughs> Prior to the meeting being called to order, Murray Parrott presented to committee his concerns surrounding the river bank erosion that is affecting his property. Mr. Parrott asked committee for their support. Committee advised Mr. Parrott that the issue of river bank erosion has been a recent topic of discussion with the provincial government. Also recommended that Mr. Parrott make contact with the office of Labrador MP Yvonne Jones. The meeting was called to order at 4.35 p.m. Pre previous, we reviewed, they reviewed previous minutes and action items with no errors or omissions. Managers reports public works, regular ongoing uh, seasonal maintenance, seasonal laborers returned on May 24th. Work is being, is being done at Building 20 to clean up the yard. Water and sewer manager, everything seems to be going as per normal in that department as well. And also in the engineering department, everything seems to be going as per plan in that department as well. Um, the next meeting, sorry, the meeting was adjourned around 6.08 p.m. Next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, July the 12th, 4.30 p.m. And there are no recommendations, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bennett. Uh, moved by Councillor Bennett that we accept the uh, Municipal Services report as presented. Seconded by? Seconded by Councillor Rumbold. Any discussion? Councillor Rumfield. I noticed in here you got item number five, the total lot landfill hours of operation change. That, has that been like finalized yet or is that still in discussions? Randy? So we'll uh, microphone over to our engineer. Uh, yes, Councillor, those hours have been, uh, have been finalized. There was a discussion with, uh, with some of the contractors affected and a PSA will be forwarded to, uh, to the public uh, finalizing those hours. But are we like closed on Mondays right now then? Uh, what was that, Councillor? Is the dump landfill closed on Mondays now? July. I, I, I believe the PSA was, was sent out, and I believe it starts on July, July 5th, yep, yeah, the new hours. 
So I also was uh, approached by a couple of a contractor that was uh, uh, advised me that he had some concern and other contractors had con some concerns. Um, I did speak with uh, our superintendent and uh, the engineer, um, Mr. Dillon, and um, uh, to my understanding, there was consultation with um, with uh, the contractors in town, uh, the ones that uh, there are a large number of tipping slips from, uh, in terms of uh, you know those that are greatest uh, impacted. Um, I did also uh, you know urge that when we're doing things along these lines, we go back to thinking about the con you know consultation. Even if we put a note on our uh, Facebook page or uh, issue a, a PSA looking for input, uh, there's always, you know, different ideas and things that can be worked. So right now the policy is as it is posted, and I think it's to be put in place by uh, put in place by July the 5th. But well, what would be the purpose of changing it now? Like, basically, that dump was quite busy on Mondays and Saturdays, really. That's a question. Can you answer that, Mr. Hill? Uh, there was issues with the with unionized workforce with their hours and with people coming in uh, close to the closing hours. Uh, so um, this makes it more efficient, and it, uh, it it cuts down on overtime for uh, for the staff at the uh, at the close of the day. Well, I mean, if there's issues with our unionized staff force, and we have a collective agreement in place with them, I mean, that would be basically enforcing that, not shutting down some of the services we're providing, right? Let's say we have an issue with one of our, for argument's sake, water and sewer employees. We wouldn't shut down the water and sewer department just because they have one employee with an issue, right? I mean, this, my opinion, my feeling is that a lot of people are not pleased with this one item. Councilor Rumbold. Uh, yeah. But just trying to recall, like when we did discuss this and it was discussed in the municipal services meeting, um, we asked the same questions. We asked why, first and foremost, and, and it was explained to us as an operational effectiveness thing. And, and um, I think the biggest concern for most of us who were present in the meeting was were the contractors consulted? And, and once it was explained to us that they did reach out to the contractors with the largest number of, of tipping um, slips. Um, I, I, I know what you're saying, that there are people that are inconvenienced. Um, I have to trust that the management and the staff would choose to do what was in the best operational um, effectiveness with the understanding that this can always be changed. So that was the way I took it away and, and I hope that everybody else in the meeting took it away that, okay, they'll do the PSA, they'll make the announcement, um, but if it ended up being, like if there was people that dump outside the gate, if we end up having a problem, I know I myself would come back to Municipal Services Committee and I would hope that anybody else would and say, um, we've got a problem that this is not working and we need to revisit it. I'm trying to myself keep an open mind with okay let's let's see how it goes for the first couple of weeks or the first month um, but yeah I, I do agree with you that there are going to be people inconvenienced and I hope that we don't end up with people who leave things outside the gate and I would you know I would what would ask our residents to um, be mindful of the hours and uh, and not to um, use that as a reason, not as a reason, but you know, to, to fall into the, well, I'll just leave it here um, yeah. trap. But yeah, I, I certainly hope that this is something like everything else that we can revisit. And if it ends up being something that really impacts our town, that we would go back and we would ask yeah. that it be changed. I asked okay. questions, I asked questions like um, the concern about, uh, you know, folks, uh, their, their hours of work are say from eight to four or nine to five. Um, so people come in, it's similar to, you know, you're going into a store and you get that announcement sort of deal. I asked if there were options like, say, close the, if the dump normally closes at 5 or 5.30 or 4.30, whatever, if a half an hour before, it could be closed. So that would allow staff to, you know, or people to clear out what they're doing and, and leave the facility and allow staff then to be, you know, regular. Because I guess part of it is, too, is that once you go over that time, 
then it's an overtime issue. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's the collective agreement side of stuff. So was there an option, you know, if the dump closed at 430 to, to the public, would it be an option to close the dump at 4 o'clock? Let staff continue to do what they do inside, do whatever needs to be done so that they can ensure that they're out at 430 on the way, on the way back home. So, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, just like from my perspective, it goes back to that consultation that, uh, you know, when we put stuff in place, with a full consultation, um, you know, pre-planning is always really important because then you don't have to do the issues after. So I hope that, uh, yeah, I hope that this works out. But, you know, I've heard from some folks that haven't been pleased and I've directed them to the director of engineering. So. Well, I mean, in terms of people dumping outside the gate when the dump was closed, that has always been an issue. Even when I was here as a town clerk and previous superintendent with that, that was always an issue. Yeah, and that, that should be an enforcement issue then, right, in terms of you know, our, our municipal enforcement officer or, you know, staff seeing someone, so. Well, I get the feeling, or my opinion really is that we're, we're a new council. I think the staff are taking advantage of that and walking all over us. I really do. And you're entitled to your opinion, sir. I, I'm of the other, of course, I think that the staff that we have are doing a bang-up job, and uh, I honestly don't think that the agenda is there that, mm -hmm. uh, that you know, that's there, and, and, you know, if that's how you feel, then. That's how you feel, I guess. Any other discussion? I'll go there. Anybody else? Okay. So um, there's no recommendations from municipal service. Anything else from municipal service before I move on? No. All right. Let's go to. We got a vote on. Adopted. Oh, did we? I thought we already did. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, it was good discussion. And any further discussion? <laughs> Long discussion, which is good. Uh, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. Okay. Motion is passed. So no recommendations. We'll move right into um, the last committee, but not the least committee. Protective Services. Councillor Duffett. Floor is yours. Protective Services met on June 20th. Present was myself, Councillor Winters, Councillor Brumfield, CAO Nadine McCauley, Director of Protector, Protective Services Brad Butler, Mayor George Andrews, Constable Baker, and EA Kathy Eddy. The fire department has had a busy month. Members received their hazmat awareness training and it's still ongoing. The mutual aid agreement was signed on June 13th and this is the first time since the year of 2000. Public safety and derelict properties continue to be a main concern for our enforcement department. Um, there's been progress with some properties that have not been conforming. There's planning underway for the bike rodeo and Constable Baker has accepted the position of Vice President and Training Officer of the province. Um, so we'll congratulate him on that. As well, the Tag Your Critter event is postponed until the front office rentals are finished. Um, there was a discussion surrounding um, the speed bumps placements around town. Uh, while they are out for the year, this is something um, that we'll discuss prior to them being placed next year. Um, and the importance of having them around schools and playgrounds was noted. The next meeting is set for July 11th at noon, and there is one recommendation to follow. Uh, please accept this as my report is being read. Yep, uh, moved by Councillor Duffett that we accept the uh, Protective Services Committee as presented. Seconder. Okay, we got a lot to choose from, but I did see Councillor Brumfield's <laughs> hand up first. Discussion? Yeah, I would like to uh, just bring up the uh, the issue about the speed hump, speed bump uh, placements. Um, everybody wants them everywhere in town, um, and you know, understandably slow. People just don't drive the necessary speed limits. Um, my uh, question I did bring up uh, on behalf of the residents was the 10th Street stop sign, and um, I just I, I I just question as to where and how and why the um, the placements of the particular, as you just call it, place or speed homes, is you just call someone and ask for one or what that process would be? Um, so would you be able to maybe for next meeting have some kind of uh, information in terms of how that actually gets put out so that we could uh, advise the public? Because I, I look at certain areas, there's speed humps where there's absolutely no playground for several kilometers but there's a speed hump, uh, but you know, in other areas there, there are none where there are a lot of kids. And if that's our premise, then maybe we you know, have to look at how we're making those decisions. I can definitely look sure. into that. 
Thank you. Any other further discussion? All right. All those in favor of accepting the Protective Services Committee as presented, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded? All right. Motion is passed. And you have no recommendations either, right? I have one. 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 Yes, on the other page, right? All right. Yes. Okay. The floor is yours, Councilor Duff. Thank you, Mayor. The Protective Services Committee recommends that Council withdraw its approval of the liquor licenses for the Labrador Inn located at 380 Hamilton River Road due to concerns for public safety. Okay, it's been moved by Councilor Duffet and Committee that the uh, Council withdraw its approval for the liquor licenses for the Labrador Inn located at 380 Hamilton River Road due to concerns for public safety. Seconder? Seconded by Deputy Mayor Wallace. Discussion? I'll Councilor say a Duffet. couple things. Yep. Um, I think it's important to note that we recognize withdrawing um, our approval for a liquor license will not solve all the issues surrounding this establishment and the area and what people are dealing with in regards to addictions. Um, in saying that, um, it's inappropriate to have a hotel that has a bar on site, directly on site, that is doubling as a homeless shelter, that is serving our vulnerable populations who are dealing with addictions. To be someone who's struggling with addictions and you walk out in the morning and it's right there, um, it just it doesn't sit right. And I fully understand that there's access nearby, but this is about making that safe space for the vulnerable populations that are present um, in regards to this being an overflow for the homeless hub. Um, and you know, I'm someone, I'm fully in support of things like safe consumption and harm reduction, but I can confidently say that I don't believe this has been creating that to the best of its ability with the alcohol present on site. All right, thank you, Councillor Duffet. Further discussion? Yep, Councillor Rumbold. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to say that um, in addition to what Councillor Duffet has shared, um, I think we had some actual numbers that were presented to us, so this was a decision that was made taking data into consideration as well. So with the um, number of emergency responses, be it um, RCMP, municipal enforcement, or um, ambulance services, um, that when we say concerns for public safety, it would be um, statistically um, something that there is a measurement there that we took into consideration. Absolutely, and uh, that's uh, that's quite important. Any other further discussion? And uh, like I say, uh, council, um, you know, understands fully now what our role and our responsibility and our, I guess, not power is probably not the right word, but what our uh, what our role is, I guess, in terms of uh, the liquor licensing uh, process. And uh, you know, we've taken that very serious. Uh, and as councilor Duffield has alluded to, that uh, you know. This uh, is only one small piece, and you know we continue to look at other pieces, uh, and we will act as and when necessary. And it's all in the event of, uh, all with the aim and the goal of uh, enhancing public safety. All right, no further discussion. All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. Motion is passed. All right. Approval of checks, mm -hmm. Councillor Brumfield. Okay. okay, I move that we approve checks totaling $587,884.12. Okay, it's been moved uh, by Councillor Brumfield that we accept checks in the approved checks, sorry, in the amount of $587,884.12. And the list is provided, seconded by Councillor Winters. Discussion? No discussion. All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. We've approved the checks. All right, Councillor's form. I always spin it around. So I'm going to start this time with uh, Councillor Winters. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just really one thing from, from my point of view is finally we have a CSR director. Um, this is my uh, committee, and dealing with uh, without a director. Uh, since the start and not until seven months after 
Uh, and after speaking with him and working with him in a short period of time, I think you're going to see a lot of things done in short order with uh, Travis, and I'm really looking forward to everything that he has in mind. And if anybody in the um, recreation field, uh, whether it's uh, ball league or, or basketball league, uh, his door is open and he is ready to do work for our town in the Community and Services Recreation Division. Excellent. Let's go to the opposite corner, Councillor Rumbold. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, Councillor Bennett is famous for sharing <laughs> classic rock <laughs> songs with us, so I'm going to make a reference in uh, an Alice Cooper song, School's Out for Summer. And so I want to take a moment to wish all the children in uh, Happy Valley Goose Bay and the Upper Lake Melville area a safe and enjoyable summer because I'm sure there were a lot of... Um, enthusiastic hoots and hollers today when they walk through those doors. Um, it's been a tough time for children to be in school and I cannot imagine. Um, and we're getting back to that sense of normalcy. So I really look forward to um, the children having a safe and, and happy summer. And um, I think the release is out for the registration date for the summer recreation program or that'll be upcoming. So um, we look forward to our kids just enjoying summer, being safe, uh, seeing lots of kids with their helmets on, on their bicycles and their scooters. So um, continue to, to keep that up. Um, the mention, and I spoke on it earlier, so I'm not gonna speak in too much detail, but on the uh, flags um, out in front of the, uh, the town hall, um, I think we've done a lovely job marrying both our, our military history and our new um, respect for reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm very proud to be on this council to see that change made. Um, we just recently celebrated National Indigenous Day. I fully enjoyed the holiday and um, we had beautiful weather. And, and um, so I think that the citizens of the town um, will appreciate that and, and looking forward to September 30th. Um, as another day to recognize. Um, I was a part of the delegation of council that um, attended meetings in St. John's. We're very grateful to the ministers that took the time to listen to us um, and hear our concerns on both um, regular business matters for the town and uh, some things that we are um, uh, looking at in a, an acute um, urgent manner so um, it was it was good to I think you've said in your um, address mayor when we were all here that we had the ear of the premier twice in a very short time span um, so even though this council has chosen to follow a social media policy and and we're not maybe um, posting frequently I just want to make sure that the the residents know rest assured um, I think you said today, Mayor, we're averaging two, three meetings. Well, at this lately meeting we're... Number 19 <laughs> we've we've nine had a people. significant number of meetings. So we're working really hard on the behalf of the residents, and um, we look forward to making progress in all things in relation to this town because we are proud residents as well, and we want um, everybody to have a great quality of, of life and all visitors to enjoy our town. That's it. Thank you, Councillor Rumbold. I'm going to swing right over to our, so he can uh, rebut your <laughs> Alice Cooper song, <laughs> and Councillor uh, Bennett. I'm good this week, Mr. Mayor. The summer is here. The sun is coming out occasionally, and everybody gets to do their thing. Occasionally. And be happy. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. I hope the adverb of occasionally changes to always. Uh, Councillor Bennett told me when we were walking in this evening that what? The sun always shines. Always. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, that's uh, kind of the approach that, uh, for the most part, we're trying to, uh, we're trying to go. Uh, let's go next to Councillor Bennett and Councillor Duffett. She's looking at me, so I'm going to forward to her. <laughs> Not much to say. Same. Keep it sweet like Daryl. No, just happy to be here, and thanks to everyone for always working hard. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Councillor Broomfield. Okay, I'd like to reiterate what uh, Councillor Rumble said about school being out and Congratulate all the kids in school on that. I'm looking forward to next year in the summer. One item I'd like to discuss or just 
briefly talk on is the transient issue. We provide, we tax people with property tax, water and sewer, basically provide service for roads and transport, water and sewer. It's not our responsibility to deal with the transient people that's come here every summer for the last few years, actually. My opinion is that most of them are between the age of 18 and 30, and they're just here to party hard and destroy the town while they're doing it, unfortunately. But hopefully now we will have something that will help us deal with public safety, which is our, all we can really do on that one. Next one I'd like to mention is, uh, again, dealing with our staff. Our staff do a lot of work throughout the whole year, and next Friday is Staff Appreciation Day for all the staff. So I'll just remind that to the councillors here and the staff. On that note, I'd like to or wish Will and best of luck because he'll be leaving us after next week to go with Nunacor. So I'd like to wish him best of luck there. One other item I'd like to mention is watching T CBC News this past week. I don't know if anyone's taken notice of it. The federal government's going to spend a lot of money on NORAD. And I think we should be making sure that we're involved in what's going on with that, to be honest with you. And then my final item I would like to mention is just congrats, welcome everyone into Canada Day next week. So thank you. And uh, on that note, we are meeting with the MP in 35 minutes, so or 30 minutes, so yeah. that definitely will be a, a topic of conversation. Uh, last but definitely not least, Deputy Mayor Wallace. Thank you. Um, congratulations to the town for being fabulous hosts. We had the Lab Cup for the first time since. 2019, I believe, we hosted at the arena hundreds and hundreds of people coming through for a fantastic and exciting indoor soccer uh, tournament that the town does put on as hosting. So well done to everyone there. Um, coming up next week, we have Lab, Lab Expo or Labrador Expo. Again, the first time uh, since 2019. And I um, just wish all the best of success the, the upcoming week. And I just think it's an exciting opportunity for our town or to showcase Labrador, but of course for our town. So uh, being a host for that, I'm looking forward to um, next week. Summer holidays, again, like you had said, Councillor Broomfield and um, Councillor Rumble, whether you graduated from Peacock Elementary School, Queen of Peace Middle School, Mealy Mountain Collegiate this past weekend, and the colleges and universities uh, locally and uh, in the province. Congratulations to everybody. It has been a tough year, but summer is here, so um, all the best and safe safe, relaxing summer. Good. All right, well, down to me. I, uh, first of all, I have a few items here, but first of all, I want to acknowledge that in our gallery this evening is the former Deputy Mayor of Holyrood, Mr. Mark Lane, and he chose to come down and be with us this evening on a beautiful sunny day. So it's uh, good to see you and thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, just uh, in terms of, uh, we've given a community update uh, as to our uh, visits and our uh, interactions with uh, the Premier and the Cabinet Ministers. Um, the, um, the attention that the Premier gave us was uh, very much appreciated. Um, you know, uh, we, we portrayed the situation uh, on our second visit uh, of the, uh, the escalation in the transient uh, situation and the activity around that. Uh, and as Councillor Broomfield alluded to, as a community municipal government, we only have certain things. We don't have uh, a huge uh, toolbox in terms of being able to, uh, to deal with that. Uh, the Premier uh, immediately engaged, uh, and uh, we're working through that process, so uh, we thank that. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the MHA as well, because he did a lot of work in setting up the meetings in that forest and continues to do work in that regard, so thank you to, uh, to him. I want to send a, uh, a note out of congratulations to TJ Gear, and uh, he's uh, just came back from the World Powerlifting uh, Championships in South Africa and placed very, very well. And uh, it's uh, good. Uh, as well, I think in uh, August, uh, we have some athletes heading uh, from a powerlifting perspective to World Calas events. The, uh, Abby is heading to, Abby Hanrahan is heading to the World's Championships in Turkey. We also have uh, Amber and uh, my daughter Brianna heading to, as a member of Team Canada, by the way, Abby and the girls, heading to Panama for the Pan American uh, Games. The graduates we had, 96 grads from uh, 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 Mealy Mountain, along with a bunch of other uh, grads from uh, various schools, the, uh, the college, uh, and uh, we've seen pictures now from two years old that finally people who work their, uh, 
their uh, rear ends off to achieve uh, great things at university finally got to complicate so that uh, that was really good and it's great to see i hope that uh, you know we can continue good work to get some of those uh, of our kids back to uh, to work in uh, in our community uh, i uh, councillor brumford mentioned but i just want to make a notice to uh, um, to thank whalen uh, the work that you've done here uh, has been uh, has been great for us. Uh, makes our job a little easier, tougher at some times, but a little easier. Uh, but we've uh, we've been strong advocates uh, from getting the message out. Uh, we have, as Councillor Rumbo alluded, uh, chosen not to, uh, to uh, sorry to follow a social media policy that was put in place by previous councils. And uh, you know we're not conducting the business of, uh, of of our community on Facebook. Information is shared to our uh, our sources, thanks to Whalen who prepares that and, and disseminates that information, and we'll continue to do that. Um, all the counselors are easily readily available. Um, you know, I've heard some that uh, don't know how to contact the mayor. Well, my cell number is eight nine nine six eight nine five, and my email address is george dot andrews at town of uh, town hvgbtown dot, uh, dot com, and the information is on the website. So please reach out. Feel free. Uh, because it's important to hear from uh, from everybody. Uh, one of the things I'd like to uh, toss on the table uh, at, a, at the next committee is the issue uh, of mental health and mental health services. And uh, we're reading some serious concerns that psychologists and uh, that are, are leaving and psychiatrist services and people are waiting ex you know, extensive amounts of time for, for the mental health perspective and also from the other perspective of uh, you know, uh, waiting times in hospital here to get to appointments. So I think maybe uh, what we should do in the next shorter order is set a meeting up with LG Health, uh, and I think we have uh, maybe the opportunity at the same time to uh, invite the minister for a Zoom process that was kind of uh, invited or kind of given to us as an option uh, on our recent visit to St. John's. Uh, the other thing that we, uh, when we were out, we didn't only meet with ministers, but we met with the CEO of uh, Newfoundland Labrador Hydro, and it was. Uh, a really refreshing breath of uh, a fresh air meeting because it was no politics. It was kind of just our community and priorities about our community. And one of the things we discussed was uh, transit and uh, public transit system in our in our community. We've uh, got the study done. Um, you know, just unfortunately, we had a, a bit of a a, uh, a pressure on our finances last year in terms of what we had to do uh, to pay uh, a an account. But I think honestly that uh, with good partnerships and collaboration, I think that that transit thing could be a uh, could be an easy uh, an easy an easy fix, and for uh, a relatively lower cost from community. But the benefit from uh, everybody would be uh, for everybody would be amazing. So we summer started for the kids on a great note. So the other thing is I want to thank these six people sitting around the table with me. Um, uh, my fingers are sore from typing. Uh, we exchange information uh, readily, but every one of you are engaged, and for that, it makes the job sitting here a whole lot easier because we're uh, we're all on the same page. We're all having discussions. We might not all agree on certain things, but at the end of the day, we're uh, we're sending a message, and that message is uh, for the betterment of our community. So, I thank you guys. Outside of that, that's enough for me. I'm going to pass it to our town acting town clerk, and thank you for filling in. Would you have anything to say? And I'm going to give an opportunity, a rare opportunity, to Mr. Whalen, who's the guy behind the, uh, he's behind the microphone and camera all the time. Would you like to say anything, sir? Because this will be your last, this will be your last. Do you want to go to the microphone? <laughs> We've got to see you on camera, too. Oh. Uh, yes, Mayor, this will be my last council meeting, and uh, I do want to say to the to the residents out there, it's been my absolute pleasure the last four years uh, trying to make sure you had as much information as possible. Um, and as the mayor alluded to earlier, there's been some ten tense times, but that's that's the times when people need the information the most. So it's been my pleasure to have been a part of that. Uh, I do wish the 13th Council well and all the best. Stay the course and uh, to my uh, work family, um, one of them sitting in front of me, I can't look at her, but uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. There's so much talent. It's amazing how much talent is in this organization, and I think residents need to understand most importantly that when you see a laborer, when you see a manager, you see a janitor, the Zamboni driver, a GIS technician, I can go on and on. Remember, they're members of your community. 
they're one of you. Uh, and they're, they're, they're here to do a job for you. And sometimes it's not always difficult, so please have a kind word. Uh, sometimes social media can be a little uh, unforgiving, but uh, I say to my current co-workers, we're still co-workers, I'm so proud to have been worked with each and every one of you the last four years. All the best. Thank you, uh, Will, and I, uh, I wish you good luck. Uh, Will, you know, you do have some time to change your mind. <laughs> if, you, if you'd like to, we'd, we'd, we'd welcome that. All right. Uh, that being said, uh, there's nothing else. Uh, Mr. Dillon, do you, do you have anything you want to bring before the floor before I proceed to close the meeting? Oh, I'd just like to wish uh, Waylon congratulations on his new uh, new endeavors. And, uh, you know, it's been a... Actually, it's been a few years. And you, you don't realize how long it's been till it's till actually leaving. So, you know, it's uh, it's been a, been a pleasure working with him, and I wish him all the best. And also, as noted by many other councillors earlier, that uh, you know, the children are out of school now. We like to, uh, you know, ensure that residents now, when they're driving around, that they'd be out uh, many in the daytime and sometime, you know, later in the evening. So we drive carefully, and we do have speed bumps out. But you know, all the same, you know, people should be wary that uh, kids are on the roads and, and, and crossing streets on, 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 a, on a regular basis. And just last thing I go, um, information update from the project for the uh, waste or groundwater. Can we ensure that that gets to uh, Whalen before he finishes and we can uh, get that on the project update thing? Uh, yes, Vera will. Okay, thanks very much. All right, so uh, there's nothing else on our agenda. Everybody, nothing else anybody wants to bring before the floor? All right, I'll accept the motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll take Councillor Winner's uh, hand. Motion at uh, the meeting, and uh, motion at the motion meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>